What is your purpose in life? I don't think I have one. What is your purpose in life? Uh, I haven't figured that out yet. Have you ever thought about it before? Nope. You've never thought about it? Nope. Not at all. I <laughs> uh, haven't spent any time on it. You haven't spent any time thinking about what your purpose is in life? Not recently. Should I be? Will you tell me? It's your life. No, I haven't spent any time on that. <laughs> I just go day to day. That's just it. What is your purpose in life? I really haven't put that much thought into it. Why not? Uh, I don't know. I'm just trying to have a good time. What is my purpose in life? You got to give me time to think about okay, that think one. About it. Mm, get through it. Don't kill anybody. Just keep doing, doing until I get it over with. Just be happy. It's just to be happy. I think that I should have fun and uh, be happy. To um, to be happy and make my family happy and my boyfriend happy and just be happy. I don't really feel that I'm here to do anything in particular. I mean, it's not like I think that I'm destined to do something or be someone or something like that. I'm just kind of going through the routines, you know, as society's laid it all out for us. I feel like I have a purpose to help preserve, conserve uh, the beauties of nature. Hopefully leave some sort of legacy. To contribute to the betterment of mankind. Tell me what your purpose in life is. Hmm. Go to work, go home, live. You gotta, I don't I got a purpose. Everybody got a purpose on earth, but I ain't found my purpose out yet. To live a long life and to be prosperous. What's my purpose in life? My purpose in life is uh, to be successful. To be successful and to lead a happy, fulfilling life. To provide well for my family. I want to be a really powerful uh, woman, build my career built in financial area. Do you think that you have a purpose? Uh, not necessarily. I think purpose is just to do what you want to do. Go out and live life and have fun. Yeah, I think everybody has a purpose in life. And what would that purpose be for you? Uh, I'm not sure yet. What is your purpose in life? My purpose in life is basically to live the best life I can and to help others and be there for my friends and my family. How do you know that that's your purpose? Where does that come from? It comes from within my heart and my head. How do you know having fun is your purpose? Uh, I don't know. I mean, that's just personal philosophy. Get it from what I think, that's it. How do I know this is my purpose? I mean, what kind of question is that? Boy, I think you gotta start drinking before you talk about that, really. What is your purpose in life? Um, my purpose in life, um, I, I am uh, deeply rooted in the uh, Christian faith, and uh, uh, my purpose would be to uh, glorify God and all that I do. Do you have a purpose in life? Uh, no. <laughs> have you ever thought about it before? I guess I've thought about it a little, but it scares me, so I don't. What do you mean it scares you? Um, I don't know. I just like to more concern myself with living day to day, having fun. And that's it? That's pretty much it. Uh, I mean, yeah, more or less, we're just going through the motions here, and, you know, you do what you, you feel like doing. I don't think there's anything really pushing or pulling us in any direction. And, uh, you know, it ends whenever your life ends. So I kind of wonder, how would you respond if someone walked up to you on the street, stuck a microphone in your face, and asked, what is your purpose in life? Why are we here and where are we going? That's the question before us last Sunday and today as we discover or perhaps rediscover the purpose of our lives and of the church. So why are we here, and where are we going at Springville Church of the Nazarene? What drives us as a church? Well, I pray that it is our desire to be a church that is driven by purpose, God's immutable and eternal purpose, as it is clearly revealed to us in the Bible. Proverbs 19, verse 21 tells us, Many are the plans in a man's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. And that's it. It's the Lord's purpose that must prevail. God's purpose for his church must be our purpose for Springville Church of the Nazarene. A strong, healthy church is a church that is purpose-driven.
And if you were to ask me why are we here and where are we going, my reply would be that we are here to fulfill God's purpose and we're going where he is leading us as a congregation. And of course, all of that begins as each of us embraces God's purpose in our own individual lives. It's only when we as individuals pursue God's purpose personally that we as a church will pursue God's purpose collectively. Now I've entitled this two-part sermon, Church, Passionately Pursuing Our Purpose. And we're doing our best to answer these five basic questions. Why does the church need a clearly defined purpose? What does the Bible say is God's purpose for his church? How can we apply this purpose, keeping it in balance here at Springville Nass? Where should we apply this purpose at Springville Nass? And who is affected by this purpose. Now, by way of review, last Sunday we answered the first two questions, beginning with why does the church need a clearly defined purpose? Let's read Proverbs 29, verse 18 out loud together. Would you read this with me? Where there is no clear directive word from God, the people drift into confusion and chaos. I mean, simply put, where we haven't heard from God, where we haven't understood the purpose that he has laid out for our lives, uh, individually as well as congregationally, then we just kind of all just go off and do our own thing. There's no rhyme or reason to it. We drift, as it says, into confusion and Chaos. Now, Paul posed this question in 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 8. If the trumpet does not sound a clear call, who will get ready for battle? And the truth is, we are in a spiritual battle. That is why it is so absolutely necessary for the call to battle to be clear and concise. The battle plan must be clearly defined. Now, in our previous lesson, we discussed how knowing and pursuing God's purpose for our lives and His church builds morale and how it reduces frustration and allows concentration and attracts cooperation and assists us in evaluation and how it honors God. We won't go over all that again today. Then we address the second question. What does the Bible say is God's purpose for the church? Now, God's purpose for his church, you understand, is no secret. I mean, the purpose of the church has been clearly outlined in the New Testament from the very beginning of the church. In fact, Jesus himself spoke of the church's purpose even before the church was established on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2. He laid the foundation. He answered the question for us, why are we here in his teaching? And I believe there are two key scripture passages, the Great Commandment in Matthew 22 and the Great Commission in Matthew 28 that summarize for us the church's purpose. I asked you to turn to those two passages before we began this sermon. So first of all, follow along in your Bible as I read the Great Commandment. Matthew chapter 22, we are going to pick it up with verse 37. Jesus says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Flip over just a few pages then to Matthew chapter 28 and the Great Commission. And let's read Jesus' words in verses 19 and 20. Matthew 28, we pick it up with verse 19. Jesus says, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. From these two well-known scripture passages, God's purpose for his church is very clearly outlined. And in its simplicity, I think it is fivefold. That first phrase in the great commandment, love the Lord your God, speaks of worship. The second phrase, love your neighbor as yourself, speaks of ministry. The first phrase in the great commission, go and make disciples, speaks of evangelism. The second phrase, baptizing them, speaks of fellowship. The third phrase, teaching them to obey everything, speaks of 
discipleship. And again, we went into a whole lot more detail with all those last week, and I hope that if you haven't heard or watched that sermon that you'll do so online. Now, it's important that Springville NAS is driven by this fivefold purpose, that we are passionately pursuing worship, ministry, evangelism, fellowship, and discipleship in balance. We need to give equal emphasis, I think, to all five of these areas. Now, with that review, then, we can move on to our third question. Number three, how can we apply this purpose, keeping balance? here at Springville NAS. Well, it's not enough, you understand, to merely define our purpose as a church or even to communicate it. There must also be a strategy to implement it, a structure to nurture and support it. In other words, our lives together, the entire church, must be organized, if you will, around God's fivefold purpose. To ensure balance, Springville Church of the Nazarene is organized around two very simple concepts. The first one is called the five circles of commitment. It's up here on the screen as well as in your notes where you might be able to see it a little bit better. As we are passionately pursuing God's purpose together, we need to be aware of these five circles and the commitment levels that each of the people in these five circles uh, are living in so that we know how uh, each of these five purposes applies specifically to those people. Let me explain. First of all, there is the community. That is the largest circle on the outside. That's the pool of unchurched people within reasonable driving distance of Springville Naz, both the yet-to-be-saved who have never been in church and the prodigals who were once in church but have drifted away from God and the church. Did you know that at the very moment that I did this research last week, there were 3,329 people who live within the 93265 zip code. 964 of those live within the city limits of Springville itself, regardless of what our sign says. The most recent survey of all of the churches in our area indicates that less than 500 of these people, only about 15% are in any given church on any given weekend. That's a relevant stat for back to church Sunday, isn't it? <laughs> Obviously, the purpose that applies to this circle is mainly evangelism. At least 85% of the people who are living in our community, our neighbors, our family and friends, do not even know or follow Jesus as the forgiver and leader of their lives. And the question is, what are we as individuals and as a congregation, what are we actively and intentionally doing to take the good news to the community in which we live? Then there's the crowd. That's the next largest circle. That represents the attendees who pass through our doors here at Springville Naz during the course of the year, both believers and unbelievers. There were about 110, if I figured it out right, this past year that attended here at one time or another. The purpose that applies to this circle is worship, what I call actually guest-friendly Worship. Now, that's a new term to some people. Let me just explain simply what that means. When you have somebody over for dinner at your house, hopefully you clean your house ahead of time, right? <laughs> hopefully you uh, put out a little nicer dinner than you would uh, the TV dinner that you would have grabbed out of the freezer for yourself. <laughs> you know, you might even get out your better dishes, and, and you might even decorate a little bit. And, and Why? Because you want your guest to feel welcome. You want them to, to feel loved. You want them to feel valued. Well, that's kind of the same thing that we attempt to do on Sunday mornings here at Springville Naz. We attempt to make our worship services guest-friendly. We want those who come here on a Sunday morning to feel like this is a place they can belong. This is a place they can call home. This is a place where they are special and they are valued. See, if we can get people to connect with God, if we can create a time and a place where people encounter God, I, I, I call it, in fact, every week I pray for a God moment. It may be a different moment for you than it is for the person next to you. But for each of us, a God moment. And when that happens, lives are changed forever. Then there's the congregation. The congregation, the next circle, then, are the people who officially commit to partnership, we call it, 
I like that better than the term membership myself. People who commit to partnership at Springville Church of the Nazarene. There are 54 of us right now at the moment. The purpose that applies to this circle is uh, fellowship, being a church that people again can call home, a place to belong, a place where we can connect with other Christ followers. Because if you hadn't noticed, we weren't made to make this journey on our own. We need each other. And we need a place where we can connect with other Christ followers who are on the same journey that we are on. The next circle is the committed And this circle represents those partners, those members who commit to getting serious about their spiritual growth. The focus here is discipleship. People who are involved in a small group, people who are tithing and giving faithfully, who are spending time alone with God in His Word and in prayer every day, who are generally taking advantage of any and every opportunity to relentlessly pursue holiness and godliness that is becoming more and more like Jesus. We'll talk more about that in a moment. Then finally, there is at the very center, the core, the inner circle. These are the people who commit to serving and leading at Springville Church of Nazarene. Of course, the the purpose that applies here is the purpose of ministry. Serving, we say, according to one's shape, S-H-A-P-E. I haven't talked about that for a while. We're going to bring that back up come the first of the year quite a bit. S-H-A-P, spiritual gifts, heart, abilities personality, and experiences. God has shaped each of us uniquely and significantly to serve Him. That's the purpose of ministry. Now, these five circles of commitment help us to keep in balance all the Five, fivefold purposes of the church. As we seek to move people, you see, from the community into the crowd, from the crowd into the congregation, from the congregation into the committed, from the committed into the core. Now, I guess I need to just stop here for a moment, and I need to ask this question. In which circle do you find yourself this morning? Which circle most accurately describes where your commitment level is today? And more importantly, what do you need to do to move to the next level? What steps do you need to take to move inward, to ultimately become a part of the core? Now, the second concept around which Springville Church of the Nazarene is organized is called the life development process. It's up here on the screen, but it's probably a whole lot easier to read in your notes. As we're passionately pursuing God's fivefold purpose for our lives, both individually and congregationally, we can chart our progress toward that by this very simple model. What's it look like? Someone, come on. A baseball diamond. Yes, it's supposed to look like a baseball diamond. All right. Now, a person gets to first base as he or she makes a commitment to Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. That's the process of knowing Christ, evangelism. A person gets to second base as he or she makes a commitment to become a partner or a member, declaring Springville Naz to be his or her church home. That's the process of connecting in Christ, fellowship. A person gets to third base as he or she makes a commitment to seriously pursue spiritual maturity. That's the process of growing in Christ, discipleship. A person gets to home plate as he or she makes a commitment to serving God and others according to his or her God-given shape. That's the process of serving Christ, ministry. And all of this, as you can see from the heart or the center of the baseball diamond, springs forth from the all-encompassing commitment to honoring and glorifying God individually and congregationally. That's the process of worshiping Christ. Worship. Now, of course, our goal at Springville Naz is to move people around the bases <laughs> as we pursue God's fivefold purpose of evangelism, fellowship, discipleship, ministry, and worship. As in baseball, we don't want to leave anybody stranded on base. The five circles of commitment, the life development process, these two concepts will help us to apply God's fivefold purpose and balance here at Springville Church of the Nazarene. Which brings us then to our fourth question. Where can we apply this purpose at Springville Naz? 
Now, this very simple answer, of course, is everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. Each and everything we do as individuals and as a church should be purpose-driven. Next slide. It should be in line with and in support of this fivefold purpose that God has designed for His children and His church. We should always be asking ourselves, why are we doing this? And how will this help us to be and do what God has purposed us to be and do? We must apply God's purpose everywhere. Now, obviously, everywhere is pretty broad. <laughs> so let me narrow it down just a bit and give you some practical examples of how this might work. For instance, we can integrate new partners, new members, on purpose. In other words, we can let them know up front about the five circles of commitment that our desire is to see them move inward to the core. We can inform them up front about the life development process that we want to see them move around the bases. Your pastor could preach on purpose some sermon planning that reflects a balance of these five purposes throughout the year. Our life groups, our small group Bible studies, can intentionally focus on all five of these purposes over a period of time. We can budget on purpose. We can create a church budget that actually reflects the five categories of worship, ministry, evangelism, fellowship, and discipleship. We can calendar on purpose, making sure that we're giving a balanced emphasis throughout the year on each one of these purposes and not giving more attention to one over maybe some of the others. We can evaluate on purpose, measuring our church health in light of how we are doing in these five specific Areas. Now, I could probably go on and on, but I think you get the idea. Where can we apply God's fivefold purpose at Springville Nass? In general, everywhere. But in specific, in each and every facet of who we are and of what we do as a church. Which brings us to our final question, number five. Who is affected by this purpose? And the simple answer is, of course, everyone. <laughs> Hopefully, each and every person that we touch as a church will be affected by God's fivefold purpose. Write this down in your notes, fill in the blanks. A purpose driven church is composed of purpose driven people. A purpose driven church is composed of purpose driven people. People. If each and every one of us would be committed to passionately pursuing God's fivefold purpose individually, then the result would be that we are passionately pursuing God's fivefold purpose congregationally as well. Here's the bottom line. As everyone is affected in the pursuit of our God-given purpose, our ultimate goal, what we're aiming to be and do as a church, I think is described very well by the Apostle Paul in Colossians 1, verses 28 and 29. In fact, would you read these two verses out loud together with me? Christ is the one we proclaim, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom so that we may present everyone fully mature in Christ. To this end, I strenuously contend with all the energy Christ so powerfully works in me. I love those two verses. Now, to what end did Paul strenuously contend? What was his ultimate goal, and should be our ultimate goal? He said it this way, that we may present everyone fully mature in Christ. Simply put, as we pursue God's fivefold purpose for His church, it's our ultimate goal to see each and every person who attends, who participates in any one of our church's ministries or activities to become fully mature in Christ. To this end, I strenuously contend with all the energy that Christ so powerfully works in me, Paul writes. And to this end, we also need to strenuously contend with all the energy Christ so powerfully works in us. That's why we're here, and this is where we are going as a church. We want to see people not only come to Christ, but to become fully mature in Christ. We want them to be and to do what Christ is and does. 
We strenuously contend, I chose the term in this series, passionately pursue Christ-likeness in each and every person that we have the opportunity to minister to in any way. Now, I guess that makes us ask this question. So, what does a fully mature in Christ person look like? Well, kind of like this. In a nutshell, he or she is growing and progressing in each of these five areas of purpose. I put this up on the screen. It's also in your notes. Let's take a look and take this apart just a bit so you can understand what it is that I'm trying to say. First, he or she is worshiping Christ, symbolized by the head, since the Bible teaches us that we are to lift up our heads in worship to God. Everything that we do and say and think is an act of worship 24-7. And so it all begins, this fully mature person in Christ, with worship, worshiping Christ. Second, he or she is serving Christ, symbolized by the right arm or hand, usually for most of us that is our strong hand, reminding us that ministry is to be done in all of our strength wholeheartedly. In Paul's words, he said again in our text, strenuously contend with all the energy Christ so powerfully works in me. Yeah, we're to give it our all, serving Christ. Third, this fully mature person in Christ is connecting with people in Christ, symbolized by the left arm or the hand. Now, I want you to notice this. When the right arm or hand is serving and the left hand or arm is connecting, we have a hug. You'll never forget that. You'll never forget that. That's the purpose of fellowship. When it's at work, Correctly, uh, we are in fellowship, connecting, getting a hug from each other because we need each other. Fourth, he or she is growing in Christ, symbolized by the feet, since God's word, we are told, is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. That's the purpose of discipleship. And then fifth, he or she is sharing Christ, also symbolized by the feet, because the scripture tells us how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. And that, of course, is evangelism. Now, friends, that's what a fully mature in Christ person looks like. As we are passionately pursuing God's fivefold purpose for His church together, this is our ultimate goal for each and every person. This is how you are affected by this purpose. And so I want to ask you two questions this morning from this illustration of the fully mature in Christ person. First of all, let me ask you, how are you progressing personally in each of these five areas in your life? Well, I mean, that's what this is for, right? This is a model for us to do a little self-evaluation and, and it doesn't do us any good to throw a model up here on the screen or put it in your notes if we're not going to take the time to actually ask ourselves the hard questions. How am I doing? How am I doing when it comes to worship? Am I really developing as a worshiper of Christ? Am I giving God intentionally and purposefully the glory and the honor in everything that I do and I say and I think? How am I doing when it comes to ministry, serving Am I actively, intentionally, purposefully serving God and serving others, loving my neighbor as I love myself? How am I doing when it comes to connecting in Christ? You know, that hug we talked about. How, how am I doing when it comes to fellowship? Am I regularly connecting with other Christ followers who have the same agenda that I do? Uh, we're just trying to get through this life. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through, but I need some help passing through. Amen. I need you and you need me. And how are you doing? Are you in a small group? Are you connecting regularly with other believers in Christ who have the same passion to follow Jesus that you have? And then, how are you doing when it comes to discipleship? Walking in the Word, walking in the Spirit. 
Are you in the Word every day? Are you, are you, are you studying? Are you learning? Are you growing? Are, are you becoming more and more like Jesus in your daily life? How are you doing on that one? And then, sharing Christ. Taking and the Gospel outside these walls to those that are around us. This is not where ministry happens. You understand that. This is not what... I mean, we come together in the... I call it the holy huddle. Uh, every Sunday, and we kind of, you know, we rub shoulders with each other. Oh, doesn't that feel good? And, and then we think we've done everything. And we walk outside, and, and you know, well, I, I went to church. Check that one off my list. That's not what it's all about. It's all about that. It's all about what's outside these walls. It's all about those that don't yet know Jesus like I know Jesus. And what am I doing to take the gospel? the good news of Jesus to them. So how are you progressing? None of us is perfect. You understand that. But how are you progressing? Are you intentionally, purposely making progress in all five of these areas in your own personal life? Now the second question that I would ask is, will you partner with us here at Springville Church of the Nazarene to help us affect as many people as possible as we passionately pursue God's purpose together. Because you see, there's something that happens. Uh, Each of us is pursuing this purpose individually in our lives, but something happens when, as each of us are pursuing this individually in our lives, we come together as a congregation. There is a synergy that builds. It is exponential. The, The impact that we can have on the world because together we are following Christ and pursuing passionately this purpose to which God has called us. Why are we here? Where are we going? Springville Church of the Nazarene. I trust that answering these why, what, how, where, and who questions from the Great Commandment and the Great Commission has helped us to discover and or perhaps rediscover our God-given purpose as a church. Now, last Sunday we concluded the first part of this two-part sermon by looking at one of my life verses in Acts 13 and verse 36. And I'd like to conclude this second part uh, in the very same way we concluded last week. Would you read this verse out loud with me? Let's read this together. When David had served God's purpose in his own generation, he died. (laughs) I just love that verse. (laughs) I don't know why. Uh, Last week I, I explained how this unique verse would be the perfect epitaph. In fact, I would love to have this said about me at my memorial service. When Mark had served God's purpose in his own generation, he died. That was it. Now this week, I'd like to to close the lesson by calling your attention to the two parts of this verse. First, there's that phrase, notice, served God's purpose. Serve God's purpose. Again, that's what life is all about. This is what the church is all about, serving God's fivefold purpose of worship, ministry, evangelism, fellowship, and ministry in balance with each other. But second, I also want you to notice the phrase, in his own generation. Don't miss that. David served God's purpose, which, by the way, is unchanging and eternal, in his own generation, which was changing and temporal. David was both orthodox and contemporary, biblical and relevant. And my prayer is that we, too, will passionately pursue God's purpose within the context of our own generation. Though the message never changes, the method must change. We must live out God's unchanging, fivefold purpose in our ever-changing culture around us. And that's what we are trying our hardest to do here at Springville Mass. When David had served God's purpose in his own generation, he died. When you die, will people say this about your life? Will this be your legacy that you leave behind. Try this on for size. Insert your name in the place of David's name. Just kind of say that out loud. When Norma, when James, when Jesse, whatever your name is, you know, just just had served God's purpose in his or her own generation, they died. Does that fit you? How well does that fit you? It all begins, of course, with your own commitment 
to believe in Jesus as your own personal forgiver and to embrace him as your personal leader. That, you see, this whole purpose-driven life thing that we've been talking about here starts, you understand, when you come into a personal relationship with God through his son, Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 10 tells us this. If you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified and it is with your mouth that you profess and uh, the name, uh, your faith and are saved. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Amen. Amen. And so I just simply ask you, have you placed your faith and trust in Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord today? Finding purpose in life begins with a personal relationship with Jesus. And if you have a personal relationship with Jesus, and you are pursuing this purpose that we've talked about these last couple Sundays, when somebody walks up to you, and sticks a microphone in your face and says, what is your purpose in life? You'll have a good answer. Let's pray. Father God, to that end, we desire for each and every individual that's here today to know Jesus, to follow Him, to pursue. You, you, you've given us a purpose. We don't have to stare blankly at a microphone and stutter and mumble and say we want to be happy and whatever else all that garbage was that we watched on that video earlier. We, we, we can have a purpose. We, we can know what that purpose is. And we can live that purpose because you have given us the ability to do so. It all begins as we come into relationship with Jesus. And I pray that if there's anyone here today, anyone who's listening to this sermon online later, watching it on our Facebook page or our website, if there's anyone who does not know Jesus, that today, right now, this very moment, they would surrender their heart and life to Jesus. They would simply say, Jesus, I'm a sinner, and I need you to be my Savior. Would you come into my heart? Would you forgive me? I want to be your child. Give people the courage to make that kind of commitment today, we pray. And would each of us individually and together as a congregation, would we pursue the purpose that you have for us to become fully mature in Christ. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.